Hey guys, Kristen here, and I just wanted to give you a heads up before we start the show that my audio for the first half is gone with the wind. Gone, 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 gone. Not as classic as the movie, but pretty classic nonetheless. My audio was lost somehow through the program we use. And so anyway, it's just going to be Marnie and Aaron for the first half of the show. Unfortunately for you guys, I was on my game that day. So tons of funny lines are going to be gone. Just know that. But our editor has edited it together so that it makes sense without my amazing lines. However, I do feel bad for you, but more so for me because I did did really well. So anyway, I jump in on the second half and uh, then really show you guys how uh, magical the show can really be. All right. Enjoy today's show. Coming up on this week's episode of the Ask Women podcast, we have Aaron M. from the super popular YouTube channel, Alpha, Alpha M. I don't even know why I just messed that up, but he is absolutely amazing. And he's going to talk to you today about lifestyle, grooming, fitness, and the importance of being an overall wonderful man, really on the outside. We're not talking about the inside this week, so you won't be bored anymore. So keep listening to this episode. to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Marnie, just to let you know, I have stolen like one or two of your titles for oh, videos. Me too. <laughs> yeah, see, it, it, that's the way YouTube works. Everybody yeah. kind of borrows creativity from everybody else. But you've had some amazing videos that have just gone bonkers in terms of views. And I'm like, you know what? This is uh this is something to steal. And so that whole ninety nine percent oh man, it gets them oh, every I stole time. That from somebody else. So yeah, don't, yeah. Of course. Don't give me no... credit for that one. There... I, I'm blushing that you've said that. So I'm I'm I yeah, I'm honored. That makes me feel really good since you are such a YouTube icon. At least for me. I you know, I think I started watching your videos two or three years ago. And you've inspired a lot of my titles as well. So Right back at Inspiration you. Inspiration all around. Yes, well, exactly. Very so good, why, very good. So why don't you tell us about Alpha Alpha M and why you yeah. started this? Like, were you a person who had a life and style and groomed yourself well? Or is this something that you discovered from doing the channel? No, you know, it, it's funny. My story is is kind of, it's taken a lot of like different roads and, and I've had, you know, highs and lows. And, and growing up, I really struggled with self-esteem. I had a few abusive stepfathers that really did a number on oh, wow. my confidence and just the way that you know I, I viewed myself. Yeah. But that being said, I had some incredible parents. My mother and my father, even though they didn't, you know, stay together, they were always this like really supportive, sort of just just constant in my life. That that you know, even though I did have this sort of like real negative sort of self image because of these these crappy dudes that were in my life, yeah. I sort of still, you know, I understood that I had a lot of love surrounding me. And so that allowed me to sort of push my boundaries and and kind of go a little bit outside of, of, of what I was comfortable with. And then I started working out and everything started to change. I started feeling better about myself. And so I used to own a fitness center, actually. And the fitness center it was my dream from a very young age. Well, one of the gentlemen that was one of my clients, his name was Steve. One day he asked me, he said, hey, I got this date. And I don't really know what to wear. I want to make a good impression. And I said, well, why don't I come over to your place and we'll take a look in in your wardrobe, see what you have and uh, see what you need. And if you need anything, we'll go shopping. And while we're at it, we need to trim your nose hairs because they're crazy. And and (laughs) we might as well, while we're at it, let's just go and, and, and get your hair cut as well. And so this was, I would say, probably two or three years before the whole like Queer Eye for the Straight Guy TV oh, show wow. really took off. Yeah, so it was a long time ago. And so I loved it. It was so much fun just going and helping. And I've always been the type of person that really, you know, I've been in the style, I've been in the grooming and and manscaping. I've been doing manscaping before manscaping was was really a thing. Right. You know, being a, an Italian, I, you know, one of the first things I wanted or asked my mom was, hey, get me a pair of tweezers because these, this, this eyebrow as in singular has to be divided. And so, right. as a um, Jewish woman, I, I understand. Yeah, exactly. We all understand hair on this podcast. So, it, exactly. And so <laughs> it was, you know, so it was very comfortable. And so I just got really good and comfortable talking about things that, that, you know, I was dealing with. And I realized that in back in around 2006, my fitness center, you know, basically exploded. I had to file bankruptcy. I was driving a beer cart to make ends meet. 
Mm-hmm. And I was like, what am I going to do now? And so, you know, in the back of my head, there was this, hey, I wonder if there are dudes that would pay me to give them basic advice on how to look good, how to, you know, how to groom themselves. And so I started an image consulting business. And that was back in 2006. And it kind of, you know, kind of took off a little bit as far as I was concerned. So basically, I I decided to start this image consulting business. My wife gives me a video camera. And I thought to myself, you know, I'm not really comfortable with technology, but this was back 11 years ago in 2008. And I was like, let me just see what this YouTube thing is about. And I started posting videos and, and I was like, all right, I'm like, this is awesome. And, and I, I think my first like real official like help video was, how to dress if you're a big dude, like style tips if you're a pretty big dude. And right away, I got a comment and I had no idea about subscribers. At this point, you couldn't make any money. It was just people that had big mouths and a video camera that were uploading videos and content. And that's sort of how it, how it stuck. I, I got this one guy to ask me a question and, and off to the races. And I found like my voice and I felt validated. And for the first time in my life, I really felt like I was being successful at something. And so yeah. that's kind of how it all kind of played out. And since then, I've been you know, talking about pretty much anything I feel like w- my audience would, would be, be interested in because I, I will talk about anything and, and I don't take myself all that seriously. And so... Which is um, why my- your channel is so popular, I think. That's why. Because even what you were saying before, and this is a lesson for anybody that is listening, you said in the beginning you had all of these things that you were very comfortable with, you know, grooming, style, plucking your nose hairs, whatever it was. And you were comfortable talking about those things, which I think in 2006, many men weren't talking about those things or even comfortable saying that they may have an insecurity around them. So I think that that's definitely like your largest skill set is that you have no shame around these things. No, it, a few years of therapy will help. Right, we'll <laughs> knock no, it right out. Yeah, right? No, it, it's true. I mean, I think a lot of guys in today's world, you know, things are a little bit more complex for guys. You know, in, in the old days, it used to be a little bit simpler. I think there we're getting a lot more you know, sort of these mixed messages and we really don't know what to do or how to act or what is appropriate because of, you know, sort of the media and, and this, you know, like you don't want to say the wrong thing and you're worried yeah. that you're going to be come across as, you know, kind of creepy. And, and you, you hear these stories about like that one, the one dude, I forget his name, but, but he was on a date with some woman. They went back to his place and it just ended up being like, she didn't really want to get, you know, with them and, and sleep oh, with them. So sorry. She, yeah. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. yeah, it wasn't that he was real a big creep, in my opinion. It was just that he had really bad game and didn't understand how to read body language. Now, I don't know the story. He could have been super creepy. No, I actually went on CNN to talk about this because they wanted a dating expert to come on and give you know th- their feedback on that situation, which happened, I think, like a year ago. I actually stood up for Aziz because I, I had said the most powerful thing that we all have is our mouth. And in that situation she wasn't using her mouth and he wasn't using his mouth to say what they wanted. They were just going by reading the room. So I think that right now, a lot of people are learning to speak up more, which is also causing a bit more confusion. But it's it's funny that you were talking about how men are very confused right now. I went um, for my husband's birthday three weeks ago. He does this thing called the trifecta every single year. He's been doing it for five years. It's him and his two best friends who celebrate their birthday every year together. And we go to different places around the world or, you know, just that we want to hang out in with all of our friends. And this year we chose to stay local and we ended up going to Hollywood to the Mondrian Hotel, which is super cheesy, but it was the most interesting experience for me because when we went around the pool, all the women that were there were not fit. Their bodies weren't great. And this is Hollywood, like a place where you would expect only perfection to be there. Every woman had at least five dimples on their butt. Their butts were hanging out and jiggling everywhere. And the women were so happy to not be perfect. And you could see that that's what they were about that day, about showing off their imperfections. While the men that were there were pristine. They were chiseled abs, the most well-groomed facial hair. Everything was perfection about them except for the way that they were carrying themselves. You could tell that they were a bit nervous and not as confident as the women in the room, which I would say is a complete flip from 10 years ago where I feel like women were in that position and men were, you know, the fat slobs who were hanging around the pool. So I I wanted to know from your perspective, since you've been doing this for so long, what is happening to men and is, is the advice on grooming for them, is it getting to an extreme? 
dream and is it having, I know this is getting into a deep conversation about grooming when I'm just trying to have a casual yeah. conversation, but I, I want to know your perspective on what is happening for men right now since you've been working with them for so long. Yeah, I, I think it's the fact that there, there are a few things going on in my opinion. One of them is realizing that competition is fierce everywhere right. for for jobs for dates for relationships for for money for everything it, competition has never been higher and there have never been more people paying attention which makes it even more challenging for guys when it comes to you know just just going up and talking to somebody because you know if you it used to be back when i was dating you know 11 12 13 years ago you know the fact that i was put together was an oddity and it was yeah. something that was a little bit different. It's like, oh, he's well groomed. He smells good. His clothes are matching and fit well and, and all that. This was the exception. Now it's almost the rule because everybody understands that, hey, if I don't put my best foot forward, we're being judged like instantaneous in the first, you know, whatever it is, three seconds, people are forming opinions, whether or not they're going to date you, you know, hire you or give you the sale. And it's all of the nonverbal communicating that we're doing. The other thing that I think is going on is Instagram and social media, which was not there right. 10 years ago. I mean, this is something new. Yeah. And so now what's happening? The only thing that we're seeing, we're being bombarded by these images of perfection. And so that's what is is expected of us as men is to, I say that, but then there's the other sort of the other face of this where you've got, you know, people like, you know, the whole dad bod thing and, and guys, you know, getting all like, grizzly and, and growing beers, beards. But I, I really do think that Instagram and the fact that these guys are constantly being bombarded by images of perfection of other men that they follow and people that they like, I think it's, it's, that's one of the reasons why, you know, guys are, are, are really putting their, their best foot forward and then sometimes going overboard. Yeah. Which I, I completely agree with you. So why don't you tell the guys who are listening, maybe the first three things that they can focus on to put their best foot forward and how they can go about doing that. Yeah, I think I think the the first thing that these guys should really focus on is is communication skills. You know, this is something that you talk a lot about obviously Marty and being able to carry on a conversation and not freak out around like an attractive girl. I think that's something that is a little bit, you know, it's something that takes time, it takes practice and it takes you know, developing, but I think that, you know, working on your people skills is one of the, the most valuable things that you can do. Something that I do still to this day to try and develop my people skills, because I really feel like if you can have a conversation with a stranger and feel comfortable in that place, it's really almost like a superpower because a lot of guys don't feel comfortable. And so I will ask questions and, and practice small talk just with people like cashiers and baristas and just people that I meet casually that don't matter. And what I mean by don't matter is it's not like, it's, and, and it's not that the they peasants, don't matter. Right. Yeah, not that they don't matter, but I'm not trying to sleep with them. Right. And so the more you practice on, on people that don't matter, it's, it's sort of like a muscle that you're, you're working. The second thing that I would say is, is go shopping for clothes that fit your body. I mean, this is sort of, you know, 101. You got to make sure that the clothing that you're wearing, you know, highlights your positive attributes and minimize your perceived negatives. Clothing is amazing and its ability to sort of, have like this, this, it's almost like visual smoke and mirrors or style smoke and mirrors. You can totally make your shoulders appear broad. If you've got a big butt, you can make that look smaller. If you want to, if, if you're super skinny, you can look a little bit larger based on the colors that you're choosing and the cut of your clothes. And so really finding that piece of, or that wardrobe or that, that actually one item or not an item, but an outfit, one outfit that you feel like the fucking man. Wear yeah. like you and I, I apologize if cursing no, isn't swear, okay. Swear like, away. Okay, yeah, you feel like the fucking man. Like you put it on. Like for me, it's simple. It's a great pair of slim fit jeans. It's a pair of boots. It's a t shirt and a leather jacket, sunglasses. That's it. When I put that on, it's almost like I'm I'm putting on my confident suit of armor, right? I know that I look like a badass in my mind, and I feel comfortable and confident. And so finding that that uniform of confidence, I think, is 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 another great step. And then after that, well, actually, I'm going to interrupt, interrupt you for I'm going to interrupt you for one second. So let's say yeah. there's a guy out there who has a limited income, and they don't know what colors look good on them. They don't know what cuts look good on them. Is there a way that they can get that same information by just walking into a store? 
store and finding out what good, looks good on them? Or do they need to have a stylist to show no, them? No, 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 no. They don't need a stylist. There, There's so many. Here's the here's the beautiful thing about the the time that we live right now. You know, the internet is amazing. And it's, it's the fact that you've got content, you've got advice totally free out there. And so I would say start on the internet, get a base knowledge. And if you simple Google search, you know, search of, hey, this is my body type, or this is my coloring, what colors work best on me or will look better. And then go into the store, either if you have a stylish friend, maybe bring them shopping with you, or you can always just go into the store and the sales associates would love to help you out. Another sort of like style hack that, that I encourage guys to do is when you go into a store, maybe it's, you know, J. Crew or The Gap or Banana Republic, whatever it is, take a look at the mannequins. And if you see an outfit right. on that mannequin that you dig, you know what? Go and you know that they've got all it. of the clothes right there. Try it on and get a sales associate to help you. They're, they're bored anyway, and they would love the, the opportunity to sort of, you know, help you out. But yeah, getting feedback and not being embarrassed to ask for help or feedback, I think is incredibly important. Yeah. There is a, a learning curve when it comes to identifying, you know, style and just paying attention. I mean, celebrities, that's another, you know, another little sort of style hack. There are a lot of celebrities that look amazing. If you've got like Ryan Reynolds, always looks great, right? Who else? David Beckham always looks great. Now, some of these celebrities, they're rich, they're famous, they're incredibly handsome, so they can wear whatever they want. But the majority of these guys out there do have some type of stylist with them that is sort of helping them avoid some of the pitfalls that they might otherwise make. Right. And so, you know, Ryan Gosling, there are a lot of sort of like iconic male actors of today that really have effortless style. And I think that's sort of the art and the, the, the hardest thing about style is looking good with making it look effortless and, um, you know, not buying super trendy items just because you think that wearing a big Gucci, you know, t-shirt, but a lot of guys think, oh, well, if it's expensive, if then it's, it's on on trend, or I saw a kid wearing, you know, Yeezys, then that's what, you know, because there is that whole age appropriate thing that you really need to pay attention to as well. Yeah. I can... Man, we're throwing a lot of stuff at him today, guys. No, this is good. But overall, what I'm, what I'm hearing is that, you know, you can have your vision of what you like, go out there and research it and see if it's suitable for your body type, find out if those colors would be good for you. You said you can find it all online. And in fact, you can find it all on the Alpha M YouTube channel, YouTube channel. Like to find of all of that information out yeah. there. Take that information, go to a store, look at a mannequin, and then ask the hottest girl in the store, does this look good on me? Or do I look like a fat schlub who's trying too hard? And that's a really great way to start a conversation as well by owning the fact that you may not look good and you need help from somebody else. So I think that that everything we've been talking about is wonderful and not too overwhelming for guys. But what would, what would be the third thing that you were going to suggest that I interrupted you on? Yeah, no, um, uh, developing a grooming routine and regimen, you know, and, and what, what I do is not what everybody else should do. And what everybody else does is not like what I do for my grooming routine is not what my dad does. And what my dad does is not what my best friend does. And so really developing a routine of, of grooming, because it's that little bit of, of self care and pampering that just makes you feel a little bit better that you do maybe once a week and, you know, developing that grooming routine and then sticking to it and having that be sort of something that you pay attention to because you got to do something, you know, either whether or not it's, it's, you know, your nose hairs or your eyebrows or, or getting your hair cut on a regular consistent basis every two weeks. There's, there are really some little things that make a big difference when it comes to the way that you feel about yourself and the way that you come across to other people. What's your grooming routine? See, see, I used to be into fitness and, and, and bodybuilding. And so I, I shave things that most guys don't shave, like my legs right. and things of that nature. And um, so yeah, my face is really the only thing that's really not super hairy. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, I, I trim everything, you know, my armpits, I, I prefer, you know, trim. Uh, uh, <laughs> this, this is not something that, that anybody really needs to know and, and desires to do. Well, you trim your armpit hairs? Sure. Yeah. And, and I trim my yeah, butt. It's a good thing. No. But, and butt cheek hair. I, I yes. take it like, yeah, I'm, I'm Italian. Like I'm not a hairy guy. Like my chest doesn't Italian. have a... You're a human being. You don't need to have yeah, hair got, in your I butt. Got, no, not, oh, no, I'm talking about the cheeks, Marnie. Come on. Oh, like the, the butt cheeks. Cheek. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, groom and tool, there you go. Groom, hit that once or twice a, a month and you're good to go. <laughs> I, certain areas you shave, some certain areas you trim. It's really about 
Um, in certain areas you pluck, it's it's really uh, dependent upon the area. Person, you know and all this, exactly. You do not shave your butt cheeks with a, a razor like Bic or something with a sharp blade because when it starts to grow back, it is miserable and you get ingrown hairs if you don't exfoliate. Right. Oh my God, I love all this. I, okay, so the, these are wonderful things. Do you ever laser anything? No, the only thing I had tattoos that I had removed because talk okay. about douchey, my God. You know, that there's a, <laughs> yeah, I had well, two tattoos. I just saw that one I of your had... most popular videos that has like 9 million views is about bad tattoos, like big mistakes yeah, you man. made. And I, yeah, I, and that's, see, I make every bad mistake that I talk about on these videos. And that's how I sort of learn. Do you think that tattoos are like, a no no, or is it just no, certain I tattoos? Think, well, it depends. Like I see so many guys that just look so great with, you know, like sleeves. And I think to myself, you know, man, they definitely look cool with those like, you know, tattoos. I think tattoos on the right guy look incredible. Unfortunately, they've got to be A, the right tattoo, and B, they can't be it can't be me because I am not responsible. I have pro- I've proven that twice. I am not responsible with with my uh, my decision making when it comes to tattoos. I had a little crescent moon on my calf and a uh, and, and like a bumblebee hornet looking thing on my shoulder blade. Yeah, much more masculine. Yeah, barbed wire. That's a step up from 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 uh, my my feminine tattoos. My ex boyfriend had barbed wire. I loved it. I he had it like around it. I thought. I mean, I was twenty three at the time. I don't know if I would love it now, but I thought it was so sexy on his arm. It was done because um, his best friend's brother had passed. Away. There was like a story behind it too. So no matter what, I had to like what was ever on his arm, but I thought it was sexy. Yeah, he was the only guy in the history of barbed wire tattoos that, that had, gets a pass because there was a story that behind it. That pulled it off, <laughs> exactly, because there was death behind it. <laughs> All right, I thought it was sexy. Anyway, we're going to take a quick break, and then we are coming back, and I want to talk about Tej Hanley. Did I say that right? You said it perfectly. Oh, perfect. All right, we'll be back in a moment, so stay with us. So you finally broke up with your girlfriend and you're free and out of that bad relationship, but you don't even realize that you're still in a really bad relationship and that's with your credit card. So break up with that awful interest rate and go over to Lightstream. They're awesome and they can save you money. And refinancing with Lightstream is so easy. You do not have to be a financial expert to do it. Right now, you can get a credit card consolidation loan from our friends at Lightstream with a rate as low as 5.95% APR with auto pay, which is lower than the average credit card interest rate of over 19% APR. And what's awesome is there's no waiting. You can even get your money as soon as you apply. So you can make that breakup happen ASA freaking P. So for our listeners, apply now to get a special interest rate discount. The only way to get this discount is to go to lightstream.com slash askwomen. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash ask women subject to credit approval rate includes 0.5 percent auto pay discount terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice visit lightstream.com slash ask women for more information all right we are back so i want to talk about this skincare line that you created um i've actually given it to my husband my husband has started using it he's never used facial wash or proper facial wash before he has not used an exfoliator. He's never heard of a serum and he's liking it. And he, I think he feels self-conscious about liking it, to be honest. I've also had him recently go get pedicures with me and he was a little bit awkward during that process, but now he loves it as well. Uh, but yeah, tell me about this skincare line that you have and why you created it. Yeah, T. Shanley is, uh, well, first off, the, the reason why we created it is, you know, T. Shanley is all about like making skincare uncomplicated and accessible to guys because you're right. I mean, you know, growing up, guys aren't talking about skincare. They're not going and and discussing it with their buddies. But being a YouTuber talking about grooming and having my wife a long time ago say, hey, you really are not getting any younger. You need to start using an eye (laughs) cream and make sure you're doing, you know, face wash. And, and, you know, I used to be a guy that was, you know, the same way as your husband. It was like, wash my face. I, I use a bar of soap from That's the shower on my face. Yeah, yeah. dumb thing, exfoliating right? wash, like the bar of soap scrubs it on his face. It's horrible. Yeah, it's, and it's also horrible for your skin. And yeah. so, you know, in an attempt to stay as handsome and devastatingly good looking as I possibly <laughs> can for as long as I can, I started using skincare and I noticed the difference almost immediately. Really? And so, um, you know, just kind of the planets, the skincare planets aligned. I met Rob and Kelly, my other two co-founders, 
and Rob knew a chemist and, and it was just this sort of this, this cosmic thing that happened that we came together and decided, Hey, let's see if we can fix the problem. Because, you know, I think the skincare industry for men, I mean, before T. Shanley, there are, you know, companies like Jack Black, who, you know, has 2,700 yeah. products and it's overwhelming. A guy goes in, it's like, I need a moisturizer and you end up leaving without anything because it's so overwhelming. And we thought, you know what? There's got to be a better way, as they say. And so we developed a skincare system. It's a simple, you know, uncomplicated routine. Uh, we've got three different levels. Level one is basic products that every single guy should be using on a daily basis. You got a face wash twice a day, morning and night to remove the, the, all the impurities and the grime and the oil and the crap that builds up on your face twice a week. You need to exfoliate to remove all the dead skin and to keep those pores squeaky clean. And then you need to moisturize morning. You need to moisturize with an SPF of 20 evening. You also need to give your skin what it needs in order to look great. That's a basic skincare system. If you do those four things every day, you're going to look incredible and you're going to notice a difference. And then, you know, of course, some dudes are a little bit older. We, you know, have a level two box, which comes with an anti-aging eye cream for crow's feet and dark circles. And then level three is kind of like the, the, you know, the, the Mac daddy, um, you know, system where it also has like an anti-aging serum along with those eye cream, the eye cream. And so the products are amazing. The testimonials have been fantastic. And the amount of guys that we have sort of introduced the skincare and that have adopted the T. Shanley system is just unbelievable. And uh, yeah, it's uh, that's, that's, that's T. Shanley. And so we've been rocking now for about three years and, and it's, uh, it's really awesome. That's amazing. I'm going to flip this back over to Christian for a second. So Aaron was talking about skin regimens and... Yep, I heard that. Okay, you heard all that? Okay, so mm-hmm. I'm just going to start. Okay, so Christian, I'm going to turn this back to you because you are the single girl right now. So let's say you were dating a guy, you sleep over at his house for the first time and he goes, oh, hold on a second, I just have to wash my face. And he, go- <laughs> and he goes and he takes like 10 minutes to wash his face and you go to the bathroom later and see that he has like all these skincare products in there, which is not all... The, the essential four or even five from a female perspective in 2019 is that weird to you a turn off a turn on like do you do you like guys that take care of their skin well i would say if it's the first night i'm spending there i think forgoing the face regimen that night would be a good move but i don't think it's unattractive that a guy cares for his skin if i saw those products i'd be like oh good for him he's like into bettering himself and taking care of himself but yeah i think right from the get-go um hold on babe i know i have a raging boner but i have to go wash my face <laughs> Me too, it'll still be there because i'm so turned on by my skincare you know that we can engage right, 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 right. you know i think in moderation if it right. takes precedence, you know, then that'll be gross. But if not, totally cool. The other thing that, that you said, Marnie, was that he had like 27 products. I mean, I think that, that <laughs> I, 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 I think there's a, a difference in, in being sort of like overzealous and looking like you're high maintenance versus having some, some, a few products that you, you Marnie know. doesn't know how to count. She really thought it was three, <laughs> but she just is bad with numbers. So <laughs> right, exactly. no, I agree with you. To be honest, if my husband were to bring home like a good skincare line, not that I would think, I don't even know how to explain it. I wouldn't be like, Oh, now he's like taking care of himself. But I, inside I would have this subconscious pride for him or something. But I will say, so my husband has been using Aesop moisturizer for a very long time and I didn't know how expensive it was. And I went to go buy him a bottle of Aesop. And then when I went to go pay, they were like, that's $97. I was like, fuck that $97. That is so expensive to do. So like for me, I, him spending too much money on moisturizing himself is crazy, but on a skincare line, I feel it's very different. So I would, I would actually not be turned on, but I'd be proud of him for wanting to take care of his skin. But yeah, 27 things would be way too much. And like, that would be way more (laughs) things that I have. Um, but yeah, I love, I love that you're doing that and you're, you're extending what you do because I mean, what you do is offering advice on how to groom yourself and now taking it into your control where you can control what products guys are using and what ingredients are in them is amazing. It's also about, you know, just confidence, a little bit of confidence. It's a routine that you can do that's pampering, that takes care of yourself and your skin. And and it really does make a difference. And that's, you know, something that 
I think guys are surprised. If you're not used to doing anything for your face and you just start doing a few basic things, like your skin looks different. It looks better. You look better in pictures. You, you know, you get compliments from people. And so you look well rested. <laughs> so yeah, so, yeah so there, it does make a difference. It totally does. Okay. I want to get to some questions from our listeners if you're open to answering some questions. I'll answer anything. <laughs> okay, good. Especially right. butt shaving questions. Yeah, right. yeah, we already got the hard part out. <laughs> right? yeah. It's all easy from here. Well, this is butt shaving, so I'm going to skip that one. <laughs> uh, looking for some advice and thought you and Kay might be willing to share your views. I've been with my girl for over three years, and recently we have talked about living together. She has said that before we do that, she wants us both to go to a, re, a pre-cohabitation therapy session together. Wow. I've never... I have never been to a therapist while she sees one on a regular, semi-regular basis. What are your thoughts on this type of therapy session? Good podcast. I hope it stays around for a long time. David. Ah, I mean, Aaron will be better answering this because I clearly am single and doing something wrong. So I won't answer. (laughs) I uh, see. Here's here's the. I you know what? I think that it's 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 good in the in the fact that she is thinking about the fact that hey, if if we're gonna live together, we want to make sure that it's it's going to be, you know, that there are going to be some some maybe boundaries or I don't even know. I mean, I didn't know that that even existed to be completely honest. And um, I thought that most people just ended up, you know, dating and spending more time at one person's house and just never leaving. And that's kind of how it worked. Um, in terms of us, you know, bringing together, you know, both of our households and and actually like making it official, I would say that that's probably important. But I also would say that, that, that you know, looking at finances is also important. For sure. There's some other things that you need to really pay attention to to make sure that that this is somebody that you know you're you're i mean three years in he's he's pretty committed at this point right yeah but this is a big next step and so he's like hey let's let's live together and she's like well we need to make sure that we're gonna cohabitate you know properly together um you know i i think it's good i think you should go why not what do you have to lose kind of thing and um you know if it ends up working great if not yeah, had some time to talk right. to I about it. Well, I don't see the therapy session as something that says whether or not you should do it. I think that, like, I'm guessing if she's somebody who goes to therapy regularly, she's talking to her therapist about how it might be causing her some anxiety, or she doesn't know how to do it properly, or maybe she's worried about him seeing things in her household that he's not going to like. I think anything you can do prior to taking next steps in any area, area of your life, like the more research you can do or the more that you can prepare hair, I think that's going to benefit you in the long run. So like I've always said, I'm jealous of Catholic people. I love that before they get married, they, they like have to go through courses to go get married, to see if their values are in line. Maybe it's not Catholic, but it's something in Christianity. I don't know. I saw it on a television (laughs) show, but (laughs) where, where they did like this, this form that they filled out to see how compatible are they are. And then they had to, you know, do some coaching sessions with the priest to just, talk about marriage and talk about expectations. A lot of things that people are too nervous to bring up, even if yes, they have been with each other for three years or things that they don't know they need to bring up. Like after I had a baby, I started writing this book, which I'm going to put out shortly, which was a hundred questions to discuss before having a baby. Because there's lots of things that in your mind, you think, oh, it's going to be fine. We'll figure it out. And then this baby comes and throws everything into a tailspin and then you hate each other and then you're anxious and tense and like just all this stuff if it could have been pre-discussed or or pre-revealed at, at least some of it could be beneficial on the back end so i'm totally into the fact that she wants to go um to a pre-cohabitation discussion with him i think that means that she's taking it really seriously and she doesn't want it end poorly on the back end. So she's taking all the necessary steps to ensure that doesn't happen. So I'm in, I'm into it. I think that David should definitely do it and not be afraid that do she wants to do it. you think that it's insulting that she would say that? I think I would only bring that up. Would you yeah, be insulted like, by what? that? Don't, I don't seem like the type who could just move in as an adult with you be, and we've known each other for three years. I mean, are you being serious if somebody were to say that to you? That you, <laughs> you Wait, what? No one would ever say it to me, first of all. No one's going to live with me ever again. Right. But I would just assume he, this is what my guess would be, is that 
he has a really, really, really messy apartment. And she's like, Ugh, no, I can't. We need to go to this thing. <laughs> right. I would assume if he had all this shit together, she wouldn't really suggest it. So I yeah, that, that maybe you're right. I think that's a great. I, I think that's a very good analogy or, or assumption. I that yeah. makes a lot I of sense. I kind of to me. agree with you on that. They spend a lot of time at her place, and she's been to his place, and it smells like you know feet and <laughs> ass. And she's like, "All right, if we're doing she's this, like, I don't want to bring that you over. Get, you got to right. get your shit together." I think it's yeah. I like, actually agree. Kind of but either way, it's a great. It's, it is a a great thing to do because then you get that out in the open with a mediator there. So it doesn't seem as harsh and he can't overreact to it and explode on her. And then maybe he can learn a few tools about how to take care of his shit and his smell and all of his dirty socks that are all over the floor. So I thought anyway, it's a benefit all around. I think that he should totally do it. I agree. If he's messy. If he's messy, exactly. But if he's not messy, I'm sure there's there's other things that you can learn yeah, from. Yeah, it. yeah. I just feel like if he's got his shit together, I'd be a little insulted. But if he's, you know, needs some, if he's rough around the edges, go for it. Okay, fine. I agree with you as well. All right, one more <laughs> question. Hi, Marnie and Kristen. I'm an older man, 57, who has been married for 30 plus years. But after my wife left and divorced me, I'm now uh, looking to start dating again. I don't have a lot of opportunities to meet women. I don't do the bar scene, and I'm more of an introvert by nature. So my best options for finding a woman are in places that don't lend themselves to long conversation, like a grocery store. After listening to a few of your recent podcasts, I've thought about using the following way to approach a woman I find attractive, and I wanted to see what you think of it. So this would be in the grocery store. Hi, my name is Thomas, and I find you very attractive. I want to find an incredible woman who's more beautiful on the inside than she is on the outside. I'd like to get to know you better to see if that might be you. Here's my number. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh my God. No. Call her, call her text me so I can find out if I'm right. Obviously, I would hand her a card Too of much. some kind that would have my name and number on it. Should I also include my email address? F W I. Oh, what's F W I W? Uh, uh, for, uh, anyway, I believe sex belongs. Winning. I believe sex belongs in a marriage relationship. So I'm too, truly looking for a relationship, not just sex. So this isn't a pickup line, as my intentions would be sincere. Thanks for your thoughts. You might have your podcast has really helped me as dating has changed a lot since I last dated 35 years ago. Thomas M. All right, now you guys can okay. give your feedback. <laughs> Okay. Well, first of all, this is a little nitpicky thing, but if you walk up and you say, hi, I'm Thomas, and then you give her a card that says Thomas, you're wasting time. She already knows you're Thomas from your card. So don't fill in no fluff. extra, no fluff, get to the point because you already have a gajillion words and imagine yourself literally shopping for some hamburger and you're grabbing a thing of meat and some guys like giving you this Shakespearean kind of, and I don't even know if it's Shakespearean, but just too much elaborate kind of thing. And you're like, uh, I'm just, I'm here. Cause I'm gonna have some burgers later. You know, it's just way too out of left field. So you can do that, but at a way smaller compact level, what would that be? Which would be more digestible just to say, Hey, I, I would love to get to meet you. I'm looking to get to know more women and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. That wasn't a great, that wasn't great. That wasn't great. <laughs> I definitely would have started, but not to that extent. If he's not a guy who's like playful and silly and he's really, you know, serious about the type of woman he's looking for, he can be more serious, but shorter smile and it will go a long, longer way than this diatribe. Yeah, I agree. Aaron, what do you think? I think the intensity level is way too high with that interaction and, and conversation. Taking it down like eight notches and, and like you were saying, Kristen, just, just, say, Hey, you know, I'm, you know, so-and-so and, and I noticed you and, and I think you're very attractive and I'd love to take you out for coffee or whatever it may be. You can get to the whole, I believe sex is something like that can come yeah, a little like, bit no. later. Like that's a little bit too. You wouldn't open it, up with, do you think? No, 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 no. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, it could save no. you on the therapy session down the line. So exactly. like, am I at church or am I at a grocery store? Like I don't need to be lectured <laughs> right. while I'm being approached. Exactly. Like, yeah, I just want to buy this cucumber. Please leave me alone. But approaching a woman in that sense to me is like a guy who would show up to play flag football in a full football <laughs> uniform. Like, like, whoa, dude. It's whoa, too intense. But it means yeah. he's serious. It means he's serious. So maybe somebody would appreciate that. 
Yeah, but no, no. no, 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 no. I completely agree with you. So maybe we can give some advice to Thomas on other places that he can meet women other than a grocery store because that that approach is way too intense for a grocery store. I completely agree with both of you. Or anywhere. No, for anywhere. Or, no, for anywhere. Unless, Unless you're for, not for dating, the first dating, you're going to your But I'm sure you've seen that in some movie somewhere where some guy has struck out a million times and he's like, fuck it, I'm just going to be honest with women. And he goes up to this woman and, and he just goes into this soliloquy about like, listen, I don't want any bullshit anymore. I'm looking for this, this, this. And the woman swoons all over it. So there, there is an example out there where this guy has probably seen it and been like, that works. I should do it too. But for most people, that kind of thing is way too intense and they wouldn't get to really enjoy the sincerity of it because they'd be kind of freaked out and put off by it and a little bit confused. So let's let's maybe give Thomas some other places where he can meet people, meet women, get to know them first, and then dive into what he's looking for. So Kristen, do you have recommendations for somebody who is 54 where he could go meet women? 57. 57, 57. I, told, I told you Marnie's bad with numbers. Oh, I told you. Oh. You know what? You know why I'm bad with numbers? I have mono. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you really? Yes, I have. I, just, right I found that out a week and a half ago. I was getting onto the plane. I like had, I thought I was having another stroke and sorry that I'm going into like a side conversation, but like I was sitting in front of my computer. I couldn't feel my body. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? And I went to urgent care and they're like, Hey, oh my God. here's some Xanax. I think you're just having an anxiety attack. And I was like, no, this is not an anxiety attack. Went to my doctor, did more testing. And as I was leaving, I said to him, my eyeballs feel like they're in my socks. I'm so tired. And he's like, well, why don't we just test you for mono? I was like, who has mono at my age? And he's like, well, it's, it does happen. And then I got a phone call before I was going on the plane last week. And he's like, you have mono. So I, and he said, you've had it or I've had it for the past three months. Oh, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy. So just telling you, I am a okay, little slower today. <laughs> I Thomas have an goes- excuse. And Thomas should not lead with that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, right. Mono. <laughs> That's a third day conversation. Too intense, like, oh my God, too intense I do for you guys. Mono y mano. That is a joke yeah. that he would say. Um, but yeah, so tell tell him where somebody who is 57 can go meet other women and how we can get back out there after being divorced. Well, I don't have the best answer. I would say at 57, he sounds religious, I would look to maybe community events or church, that type of situation, um, or going online. And I know that's a simple answer, but that's where all the women are. And they're looking for a little bit more of that dramatic intro, perhaps, because they're out there putting themselves on the internet saying, I want to date. So maybe that would be more of his genre of person. Yeah, you can put he, that in your profile. Yeah, yeah exactly. He could, he could put that in his profile. And so he would only get contacted by by women that, you know, would understand what he's all about right up front. Um, I wonder if he works out. Thomas, if you work out, the gym might be an option. A lot of amazing, you know, single women of all different ages at, at the gym or health club or yoga class or whatever it may be. And so I think that might be a, a good a good option as well. Well, actually, I have an additional question on top of what you just said. So how how do you meet people at the gym? I know that you're married, so it's been quite some time where you're hitting on and picking up women at the gym, but I'm guessing you still do meet people at the gym on a friendship level. So how do you how do you start that at the gym? Do you just go up to women and say Thomas's spiel at the gym? Or is it more it doesn't of a work slow at the build? gym either? No, right. it's a slow build. It's something where you just get familiar with people and you start seeing them. And the, the, the great thing about the gym, I mean, there are, you know, different fitness centers, not just something that is, that is, you know, super, you know, everybody's in spandex. There are different sort of, you know, centers that, that have, you know, sort of a different client base. Some are a little bit older. Some are a little bit younger. Some are, you know, the crunch fitnesses and, and the, you know, soul cycles. But, Getting to know somebody and seeing them and just starting with a simple hello, how you doing? How was your weekend? Um, you know, doing cardio next to them, you're sort of trapped for a little while. And um, but just once again, if you start a conversation, don't get into the whole, you know, my name is Thomas and I'm looking for, you know, this serious of a of a relationship right up front. I mean, just getting to know somebody a little bit easier and, and look at their hand to see if they're, you know, wearing a ring, obviously, to, to see if yeah. they might be single or not, because even at the gym, uh, typically women will wear their, their, their rings if they are engaged or married. 
I think very good advice. All right, guys. Thank you so much for answering those questions from our listeners. If anybody wants to send in questions that we will overanalyze and discuss to death with ourselves and our guests, please send them in to ask at Ask Women Podcast. And Aaron, can you tell people how they can find you on YouTube and how they can get their own step one system of the T. Chainley skincare line? Absolutely. Yeah, you can just find me on YouTube at if you just search Alpha M, that's the easiest way to to find me. And then um I think Marnie, what we'd love to do is is offer you guys a link if if you would be open to that, just so that you know people yeah. could go to tige.com and maybe we'll do slash wing girl or something oh, like perfect. that. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, yeah, um, that's all they need to do. Wonderful. And I definitely recommend that people go check that out because I will say my husband has tons of blackheads on his nose that have been there forever. He refuses to let me pop them, which is like the best thing in the world for me because I love popping zits, but he refuses to let me. And I have noticed them decrease a lot since he started using the products. So it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And I've used them myself, the skincare lines. They smell really good. Um, Anyway, I couldn't speak more highly of them. So please go check that out. And Kristen, where can people work with you if they want to improve their banter skills and their online profiles? Well, my new website is finally almost done. I think it'll be up on Saturday. Yeah. Um, So they can go to kristenandchill.com. And it's like my new brand page. So it involves my podcast and my, you know, my other one called Kristen and Chill. And then um, this uh, banter stuff as well. So yeah, hit me up there. Which is amazing. All right. Mm -hmm. New episodes of the Ask Women podcast come out every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. I also now post them on YouTube. So go check them out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Marnie Kinris. I also have tons of other videos up there giving step-by-step instructions on how to attract, date, seduce, and get any girl that you want. You guys are awesome. You have always been supportive of us. We've been doing over 300 episodes of this podcast, which is just absolutely amazing. And we cannot do it without listeners like you. So please keep listening. Please pass this podcast on to other people that you think will benefit from what we share. You're awesome. You're wonderful. And we'll see you next week. 